right. Hello, everyone. I think everybody should on the camera for a while, no? Just to see the faces, no? At least uh, Bunchanak and all the juniors, no? All these people that you are going to see, Bunchana, are your juniors. Okay. All right. Cool. They are in the um, four year. And mm. Irapon Suntananon is Ayanjo. I don't know. You, Sorry, how about that? I don't know. You you know him? Uh, I I think I think so. You you saw him in the right? We haven't been together in class, right? Bunchana? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think so. I think I've seen you with with others, but. Uh, we have never yeah. learned from each other, yeah. Bunchana all was... right, nice having you here today. Thank you for your time and all the efforts, Bunchana. Uh, yeah, thank you for the invita invitation. Very much appreciated. Students know you, no? Because I shared with I shared with them this weekend the, um, this webinar that we did uh, about high rise building. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I I shared the link with them at least to be familiar with you, your face and your voice. Okay, so you know this thing is going to be online, so everybody know um, that you really. What is the project that Mr. Bunchana like a lot? Can uh, any... no. anyone? I, this, I... this question is for the students. Okay, does it have to be high rise only? <laughs> no, I mean, in the lecture, Bunchana mentioned one building, no, here in Bangkok, right? That's yeah. anyone you can tell to Mr. Bunchana which one is the the building that he like, Kim. What what is the building that he referred in the in the in the webinar? Uh, hello, hello. Uh, it's it's uh, the park origin in Payatai. Are you going to talk about this project, Mr. Gunchana? Yeah, that sounds right. good. All right, good good. Okay, so we don't want to. To put more pressure, we are doing this assignment. No, that is this semester, the vertical construction. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and now is the moment that we want to know. Okay, what is the things that the people working in high-rise building design are doing here in Bangkok? No, so mm -hmm. that is the reason to invite you here. Okay, to share your experience with our students, no, your juniors. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also I think for you, you told me that this is a good opportunity for you to. To be in contact with your juniors, no, and yeah. also to protest, no, against the things that the university didn't teach you, and you need to learn outside the university, right? Uh huh. It's, it's a moment for you to say, okay, if I were in the fourth year, I want the teachers to talk about these topics, no, more in detail. Mm. Right? Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's something okay. like you told me the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So now is the moment for you, okay? So feel free, don't feel pressure and nervous, okay? We are here, all friends, all your mm -hmm. units, okay? Okay. We you lecture, you you talk about your concern in high-rise building design, mm -hmm. and then later we have a um, QR, you know, question and answers, no? Don't okay. feel about this because basically no one will ask anything because this is the um, the topic, no? You also were a student, right? Yeah. So don't think that many questions, okay? But since you are a senior of them, I feel that they have a lot of questions for for them to do for you, and then you will have a lot of questions for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Still close to you because you are from back. You are one of us. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. it is yours. All right. So a little background. Um. I'm uh, from AR15, so that's about, I don't know, about five years ago. Uh, yeah, and so the the thought behind this uh, designing this presentation was uh, thinking back of what I would, you know, give the information to myself back when I was in fourth year. I was designing a vertical uh, construction. And yeah, so I prepared uh, the presentation in a way that um, from the experience of working for five years, what are the things that you know you can take away and uh, help in your design in your courses? So let's go. Um, so yeah, vertical construction in Bangkok. Uh, uh, the the way design we can break it down into um, you know six way six you know parameters or six uh, keys areas 
that can cover from the beginning to the end, right? So the first one would be law and regulation. Uh, you know, we as an architect, uh, we have to always abide by the, the building code and the urban code in order to make the building, you know, legal. And the second one would be the site. Uh, yeah, the building have to be on to on a piece of land. So site is extremely important in the way we think and how we design building. The second, the third one is uh, design parameters. Uh, you always get briefs from your client, uh, objectives and the goal for this project. And so that will be always in your consideration when you trying to design, because design is is a uh, is to come up with a solution to you know issues and problems and so on. Uh, the fourth one would be programs and function. Uh, the fundamentals, the the things you, the knowledge you have on the different types of building will always come in and you know aid you in your design. The fifth one would be to identify the problems and the issue in every project. There are always different kind of uh, problems and issues. Some can be similar to previous project. Some may be unique to that in that specific one, and so with all this, you you can come up with a value added design, a design that is tailored to your client and a design that is specific to the the programs and everything that you that surround this pro this project. And so this thing, the design come up cannot just be any design, but a design that give values to the user them, themselves and to the client as well. So let's start with law and regulation. Back in the day, uh, when I was in student school, there wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, uh, emphasis on law and regulation. For high rise buildings specifically, uh, a building that qualify as a high rise building have to be at least 23 meters in height. Uh, and not always, but most of the time, the building area is above 10,000 square meters. So what does this mean? Uh, in the building code, the building regulation, there is a two separate uh, regulation, one that specifically applied to a specially large building. So a building that is above 10,000 square meters, that will have a, its own set of rules uh, in addition to the rules that cover everything else. So, so when you design high rise building, there's is like you know one more or you know a couple more uh, regulation that you need to be aware, right? So let's start from the from the left here. Uh, it's the urban code. is is the code that governs the site. Uh, you know when when you when you when you design a building, you have a site, and the site is in a specific area, and that area have its own code, uh, local code. So that we call urban code and it can you know tell you what is your far uh, how much building area they can build what is the open space area you have to be aware of and so and so on so this is always in every type of you know building doesn't have to be high rise only but it cover everything so you need to be aware of this the second one is a general building regulation uh but that covers uh building in general uh in terms of you know what what the definition of building as the, the fire safety rules and so on. And the, this one, the high rise and extra large building regulation here is the one that, I've that I talk about uh, that covers, you know, building that above 10,000 square meters. And, you know, the, the, the code will be more, I would say, strict compared to the general building regulation because uh, there is higher height is, is harder to, you know, to provide safety for people uh, on the higher floor. So yeah, it's more a strict, a stricter regulation, and the local building regulation. Uh, I'll assume that you are doing this building in in Bangkok, so there will be a, a set of additional rules in in Bangkok that cover you know Bangkok. But I don't know if if you do the building in other areas, uh, you know, say Pattaya, there will be a local building regulation that governs over there as well. So in all in all. Uh, the code you have to be aware are more or less in in this as a starting point, and there will be you know uh, you know further regulation depending on you know where the site is. So yeah. And in terms of designing uh, high rise building, I would say six. Here are the six things, the six common regulation that you should always take a look uh, and prepare when you design a building. 
The first one is the FAR, which is stand for floor area ratio. Uh, basically, it tells you the amount of you know building areas that you, could, that you can build according your, to your site. So let's say you know a typical, a typically dense uh, a site area in a you know uh, we say central district would be like a one to ten FAR. So if you have a plot of land that is ten thousand square meters, you can build a hundred thousand square. Uh, uh, area building, yeah. So, so you can ex you can see uh, if this building is viable as a high rise building because some site may be too too small or some site will not have enough FAR to be feasible in 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 term of doing a high rise building. The second one is the green area. Um, uh, if you know if you're doing a residential building or uh, office building, you need to be concerned of a uh, green area. You know more. Almost like I would say 80% of the projects that I've been through, we always come across an issue of not having enough green area and sustainable green area as well, which means uh, you need to have some sort of uh, green area on the ground floor where you can plant trees. And so, you know, you know, the client would want, you know, as much footprint and as much building area as possible, but, you know, need to, you know, balance between both and, and, and see and see how 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 you can provide green area into your building. The third one is open area. Uh, so yeah, like I said, uh, depend on the there are three three different regulations that talks about open areas. Some you need to check all of them and see which criteria have will you know ask you to give the most open area. You have to follow that. And so uh, yeah, this is this is also a common regulation that that some time can give you an issue later on. The fourth one is the building setback. Uh, this is very, very important in determining determining the, the form of your building. Uh, and I'll talk about more on this on this regulation because it, you know, you can see it in many buildings in high rise that how it affects the form and the, the slope of the building. The fifth one is the fire safety. Uh, it's extremely important to have to, to know your fire safety code because uh, high-rise buildings have many and some are quite strict and will hinder the way you, you know, plan your building, the layout. And the sixth one is the parking, the parking and access way. Uh, uh, parking is also uh, a thing that we as an architect uh, doesn't want to, to give a lot. We, we want more facilities, we want more user, user areas, but you know, parking is, is uh, in, in Bangkok, is uh, quite, quite, will take a lot of space in your building. So you need to, to keep this in mind as well. Uh, here, here are the, the things that, uh, some case studies that I show you that uh, talk about the one to two setback area. As you can see, the building is in a road and uh, as when you try to uh, do the regulation, the one to two height, and you can see that it just cut the building Right there. Uh, so, like, uh, like for example, if this is the road here, right? And so the 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 regulation states that from the the side of the opposite, you know, location of your site to one and a half and to two h here, like I said, like 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 this, and then you you slope it out. Maybe you get something like that. Yeah, it's just roughly. So so that de determines the maximum limit in terms of. Uh, how how your building goes. Some building, some project choose to just cut it right there. Some people try to make a a, a step a step in your your being the building, and so yeah, you can see a lot of this in Bangkok. Um, right. The next one is the project that uh, I was a part of when I I just graduated, uh, Park Payathai, right? And uh, interestingly, you can see that. We didn't have a slope in in front, right? And so we have a slope at the back instead. Because uh, in this project we have a road in front here, this road number one, and this road number two, yeah, and we have another road here. And so, you know, we do 1.2, 1 to 2 regulation here, and it didn't it just uh, didn't click the front. But here it's a bit tighter road, and so it was the slope going like this way, yeah. And so we have another one somewhere here and it just click on the part of here. So the slope is at the back of the building instead of in front. 
And the way we treat this, instead of just cutting right away, we make it a step. And I'll, I'll talk about the, the design and the, the concept of this building at, at the end of the presentation. But let's just move on uh, in, in other part first. Right, the second part of the high-rise design is the site. So when we have a site, we always, you know, analyze the strength, the strength, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threat of the site. What, you know, what is this site uh, capable of doing? Like, um, is it does it give a nice views towards um, the sea, the park, or the temple? Any good views that you you should, you know, point your building towards? Uh, does it have any nearby buildings that you have to be aware of, and you try to avoid the buildings and to give uh, the views towards the open area. Uh, so, but in some case, your building doesn't have any good views outside. You can create your own views inside instead. Uh, yeah, and also sun analysis is also very important because when you design a um, building like condominium, you know, most of the time, user prefer to have buildings that facing the north side. So that in that side, you know, they always sold out first. So we try to minimize uh, rooms towards the the, where, the area where the sun uh, have the most exposure and yeah to keep the building uh, so we can sell more buildings uh, more more rooms uh, the third one is design parameters uh, this talk about the the awareness of how your building composed of uh, let's say co condominium right um, it is more like a rule of thumb uh, you have about 22.5 of your area in parking, 12.5 in circulation, 10% facilities, and you have about 55% in unit. This is in terms of efficiency. Most of the project will always will test first if this building is feasible. And the, most of the time, the client will look, will look for 55%. And if it's above 55%, then they will consider uh, giving a go. Uh, office. The office space have uh, less circulation because uh, the entire footprint is not break down into different parts of the, you know, uh, things like the, uh, you know, garbage room and so on, and can be used as an office space more. So yeah, but uh, in in terms of regulation, it requires more parking space per square meters. So you have more parking space, less circulation, but more office space. Uh, hotel is a bit. Uh, it's my favorite because it's a it's a mix of services as well as uh, the uh, user experience. So yeah, about twenty two point five percent parking, twelve point five percent circulation, fifteen percent back of house because you need uh, services like laundry, kitchen, and so on, and ten percent facilities depend on 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 how how luxurious your your hotel is. You have maybe a gym, swimming pool. Uh, extra facility and so on, and about forty to forty-five percent of uh, area where you become become a hotel. Yeah. Okay. For programs and function, uh, right. Let's start with condominium. Um, this is, I would say, the kind of things that will dictate the way the com condominium in Bangkok works. Uh, because we always talk in relationship towards parking space. Uh, as you can see, it's a typical, you know, uh, plan of a uh, layout of the rooms. You have a balcony, you have a living space, you have, you know, dining and pantry area, small kitchen, you have a bedroom and a bathroom, right? Uh, you can see on the left is a one bedroom, and on the on the right is a two bedroom. Uh, you can see that um, the size of the bedroom is actually the same. This is the same red box, and I just I just copy over, and it's the same size. Uh, I'll give a reason further on why it is so, right? The bathroom is the same size. Uh, living space is basically double. Yeah. So what happens here is basically you can see down, it comes down to the, the grid system, right? The grid system dictates how you have, you can have parking space. So this grid system from A to B can give you a, a two parking space and the next one from B to C, like a two parking space. and so. Uh, the way you design this uh, grid and uh, and like this, you you can have the very efficient parking space. And so, when you have efficient parking space, you can squeeze, you can give 
less space to parking and so you can you know minimize parking space and that's why the building and the rooms are have this some sort of grid and always in this proportion you can you can try having a longer span like three cars in in one grid but they'll you change the way you you know you lay out so most of the time when you try to search for your for your uh, case study the rooms are more or less in this layout yeah like i said um you know, when you lay out the typical unit area you have a lift core you have a fire safe fire escape staircase and so you can have like two two um two units side by side and you have you have uh, like a column here and you have another column here and so it fits three car and you have another column here you have another column here and so it fit three cars so this way you have a very efficient you know parking space and so you know most of the time 90% of the time if you didn't have you don't have the luxury of space you, you it will be a typical layout like this um right for office the office is about uh, the core design and the, the position of your core uh from the left you can see uh you have you can have a centralized core system you can have uh, the core at the back in, in position number two or you can have a split core on a on a position number three depending on the type of office you have and the you know uh high zone and low zone and so on right and so in office you also want to maximize window space because that is like uh the things that you know people who buy office want they want more views toward the outside so having a centralized core may benefit you in that way and also they you have to consider your structural uh system as well because uh office want long span you need they want unobstructed space so be as long as possible so sometimes you can see uh, uh like a typical eight to ten meters span or if you go for steel steel structure you can have like 12 meters span yeah and the core the way the core design is impact into in terms of the way the building is formed as well so let's say the building setback uh forces you to have a stepping stepping form of your building to maximize your area so having a core at the back may be the best uh the best way to go having a core in the middle will you know doesn't cover the area at the, at the top so uh, or maybe you have a mixed use building where you have a hotel in the, in the top and you have an office in the middle and you don't want to mix between the hotel user and the office user so you can have a core on the side instead uh okay uh the next one is the way you want to partition your space uh so that you can uh you can split uh the large space into different areas so you can sell off right so uh you can a uh, centralized one would be easy to access into uh four four area equally or you can have uh one large space for one office so having a core on the right may be better than having a core in the center and the core and the right can block the views that you know if adjacent building so yeah the, depend on on the side and your building and everything this will come into your consideration uh the next one is a hotel uh hotel is a bit special because you have uh two two types of client you have the client on the side that is uh, developing the building and you have the client on the other side who is the brand of the the hotel right there's so many hotel brands in in bangkok uh, in the world uh, i have worked with you know the ihg group the intercontinental group yeah, i have worked with the standard the marriott uh different brands uh, come with different um standards of how they are, they want their hotel to operate and so you can take a look and you know look at the style of their hotel and it will it will help you in terms of designing the hotel as well. Uh, one of the hotel in Bangkok is the Rosewood Hotel, and you can see it's a very luxurious hotel. And the way the interior design and uh, architecture kind of depicts the the standards and the the branding of the hotel. Another one is Park Royal. Here is the Park Royal Hotel at Pickering Street in Singapore, and you can see Singapore are more uh in terms of green architecture and so the, the the building also kind of changed the way 
and and you know in relation to their branding as well. Uh, hotels, you need to be more concerned about the back of house because uh, I can say the hotel have two core in terms of design. You have the residential space. You want to design a hotel that is very nice to use, have a very friendly environment, environment, as well as you need to have a service, a core where you can, you know, deliver food, you can do housekeeping, you can manage things after the guests had left. And so there's a back and forth um, things that need to be aware. So the circulation path of how things are crossed need to be need to be concerned as well. So yeah, there's this like these two core that always revolve around each other and 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 like impact the way the space is built. It's so so it's totally different from hotel where you just have a uh, the office worker that is your main your main uh, user and or you know condominium you have residents, but here is like the two core, you have a staff, working staff, and you have uh, the guests that are staying. All right. Um, the, uh, the, fifth, the fifth key area is the problem and the issues. And so um, when you design a building, you always, uh, when you start thinking about concept, you always look for things you want to improve, right? You want to make, how can you make a building better than, than other buildings that come before? Uh, so you try to look at, can I provide better management? Can you, can I give a better screen space, you know, better working environment, I give a better view and so on. And so all these things always uh, have relationship towards things that you need to know, such as the urban context, the facade design, parking design, materials, you know, the circulation, how to operate the building and so on, right? So all these things are tiny element that you have to identify of what things you you are uh, the issue the main issues and the, the things that you want to tackle in your design I, I can't tell you you know what what things you need to to look into because some projects may may want to you know provide better better views but lack in terms of facilities other others project may want a better facility but you know sacrifice their views and so on so yeah it all depends on what what you want to maximize in your project, right? The here comes the fun, fun part, right? The value added design, right? Uh, for me, my my formula, my personal formula in terms of thinking the way to to give value into design is can be can be summarized something like this. So you have the objective and you have goals that that plus the challenges that come with the challenges, and then you use it to, to find a solution and then you give a design, right? So like uh, the objective of the goals can be, I want to, desi I want to design a mixed use high rise building that comply with the regulation and also as well have having a high energy performance, meaning that it uses less energy and have a more energy e efficient building, right? And also nice architecture to come with it. So then what are the challenges that I might, might face? Uh, a face be I can face the, the balance between the constraint and op opportunities. You know, the budget can come into play. Uh, I don't want, I, I don't have a lot of budget, but I want to have a, a nice architecture. Or maybe this, this building have a lot of neighbors, high rise building that block the views. But so what are the opportunities that I can, I can, you know, come up with that can solve this issue? Uh, efficient planning. Uh, planning is, is extremely important because planning you start right away from the from the ground area where how the how the user will come to your building how they you know walk into your building and how they journey up and down in your building the way you lay out things are extremely important because uh, a good planning will give you a, a good management and a good management make everyone happy um, also context relevance. Uh, your building is in a site and the site have surrounding, right? And you want your building to have an impact in the urban context. You don't want it to be an alien in the site. So you need to 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 think of how your building can contribute to the, to the context and make it make it seem like, yeah, it's part of the 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 surrounding. And you know, not only does it give the the uh, you know, I say a look, or uh, 
uh, an impact in terms of the users coming to the building, but also people who look into look from far can you know enjoy your building as well. Facade design is important. Building performance, uh, user experience, technology, structural and mechanical knowledge, yeah, all of them are challenges as well. Um, right. So in terms of challenges, I break down into two parts. Uh, the, the first part is the analyst analysis part, and the second one is a fundamental part. Right. So what are the the things that you want to analyze? The first one is the of, of course the constraint and opportunities, the context relevance, where is your building is, is your building in Tongla or your building in you know the, the outer part of your the city is all different. Uh, how your building can be can perform better and what is the user experience? So all analyze what what's your target group and who's coming and who's buying your your, your building. Um, the fundamentals, of course, you need to know, you know, everything, the space, the sizing, the proportion of your plan, facade design, what type of facade design can help to, you know, provide more shade, block more sunlight and, but give good views. Uh, technology, of course, nowadays technology is, is good. moving forward. There's so many technologies in helping you design like, like parking, circulation and so on. Uh, yeah, structural and mechanical knowledge, right? Uh, when 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 you're working, you always have to be concerned of, you know, how things, not only architecture but structural and mechanical part that come into place. Some things you you want to do but you can't because um, mechanical part doesn't want doesn't allow you that. So so you need to be aware of this as well. But this is something like a basic knowledge that you need to you need to acquire in order to to be able to you know, uh, understand your challenges. Right, so once you, you have that analyzed and have fundamentals in terms of challenges, you, this is more or less personalized, like individual, like everyone have different type of creativities, different people, uh, everyone have different creative, critical thinkings. And so combined with these tools, you are, you're trying to, you know, think out of the box and see what solution you can come up with, right? Uh, yeah, and so here are the example that that I prepared, and we'll give you a step by step on on how the 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 process that I I I use that to come up with a building, for example, right? So you have a site, and your site have a can extrude depend on your FAR, right? And so then you have a setback, you cut out the area that is over the setback, so you have a building volume, and the building volume I separate into two types of building depend on the, the function, right? The hotel and the office want to be an, in front because it's public space, but the condominium is more private, so you want it at the back, right? Uh, right, and then I push the building mass left and right to give views towards the back building as well. And then, yeah, to create views uh, looking out and don't block it, that block one another, right? And then I can divide space into function zoning, right? Uh, lobby in at, on the ground floor, then followed by parking, and then uh, living space or office above, so you can have views out into the city. And then I I try to make a horizontal uh, terrace instead of a slope to add more green space, and then I can you know add design to pushing things and moving blocks to give views and ease out this, you know, very tight constraint of the building to give more, more rooms in the middle. Uh, yeah, and then with sun path, you know, I somehow need to design a facade that can block, block the sunlight, but, you know, maybe give a, uh, a interesting space to the building. So I pop out some of the, the facade. Uh, so yeah. The facade can pop out, and then I can have a balcony, and yeah, and the and the, the pop out fast, uh, the pop out part on top become a balcony, um, and the below become a, like a like extension to their bedroom, for example, and so yeah, combined with things, uh, you know, facade design shifting here and there, more or less, and adding green space, so yeah, this can be a start of a of a design as a concept. So on, yeah. Uh, right. 
and so coming to origin park Phaya thai so when i when i graduated i get i was uh, accepted to to be working with oi nong and so one of the project that we did was origin park Phaya thai right and uh, it's currently under construction almost almost complete yeah and uh, the idea of this building was to have a vertical marathon right um, you uh, you can you can walk all the way from here right all the way up the staircase here and you go up here like a, this line and then you go up all the way from all the way from the exterior of the building to the rooftop and so there was the, the the concept that make uh, that was successful and we won we won the the competition to design this building uh yeah and so yeah the facade changed but the idea was still the same you can see from the right side that um yeah we have a setback right the setback number one yeah cut the building into into two parts the tower the tower that can go higher and the lower tower and then we make a stepping stepping terrace you know to add more green area as well as uh areas for the the resident to come out and use right and we have uh divide into different type of units having face out with views at the back and then connect connect different terraces together via staircase so you have staircase over here you have green area yeah and then you can link from here all the way up to the rooftop yeah because you know everywhere are all rooms in, indoors and so we want to to provide a con connecting green area on the back of the building you can say like a mountain so yeah here you have swimming pool you can have a green terrace on different type of terrace some hardscape some picnic area barbecue area and go up right yeah and we different we did different type of facade design we can uh, this is you can have vertical one you have pixelated one and so yeah it was just doing the study at very early stage uh yeah okay in term of planning uh yeah let me zoom in right so you can see with Burry because it's, it's quite old uh yeah you have access coming from Payatai Road you have the the back towards the yeah the soil at the back right and you have the lift lobby here as the first tower you have another lift lobby for the mid rise tower uh, mechanic we use mechanical parking for this building because the area is pretty tight and so yeah you have you need to have a six meters uh road around the building for your fire truck yeah and so yeah the guests can come in drop off here come up to the building and then go up All right and uh here is the plan for your mechanical parking the mechanical parking goes sideways, left and right, up and down. Yeah, right. And the core, and so we have a podium of mechanical parking. Right here is the plan of the swimming pool. So you can see this building have you need quite a few staircase. You need um you need a staircase here that can that have that qualify for the ten meters dead end. You have another staircase here. You have another staircase over here on the bottom building, right? Uh, right. So in terms of regulation, in every floor, you need to have two, at least two fire staircase and two fire staircase cannot be more than six meters from each other. So that's why we need staircase. And so, yeah, we have rooms here, rooms here. Yeah, so like I, like I show you in a diagram, uh, right here is a typical floor. Yeah, you can see staircase here. Uh, staircase here. Uh, two lift lobbies, one for the high zone and one for the low zone and the garbage area. Right. Service call service lift here. Yeah. So right. Yeah. Very typical in terms of layout, and you can see. Uh, this dash line here uh, indicates how the building kind of get back, like uh, retreat, like in this floor, it get shorter and shorter and shorter. Yeah, so you always need to 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 align this to your to your building so you can 
cut off one room and not partial room, right? So you can see here as well. Some room, if we if we have to cut some, if we have to cut some room, the room can be larger. So we stack this up all the way, and then we got that that building here. Yeah. So we can stack all the way, and then the top one is the facilities. Yeah. So yeah, this more or less the how how this building came about. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Bunsana. Very, I mean, they, you go through most of the topic, no? Very good. I think it was very, very clear, the presentation. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a bit nervous because my first time, but if you have any question, feel free to ask and I can, you know, go back and talk about things. That yeah. I go through. yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. If any question from our students. Yeah, so I, I had this confusion for a bit. Like when we consider the green space, is it supposed to be like a green space where the water can go all the way through the ground, or does the green space also apply in, inside the building as the project that you're showing as a mm. uh, the Payatai project that you've been showing? Okay, right. Uh, you can kind of see like the green spaces on the roof as well. Mm. Uh, is th does that consider as green space as well, or mm. that does not apply? <clears throat> right. Okay. Good question. Thanks for the question. Uh, right. There's there's two type of green space. There's an overall green space requirement. Um, according to the regulation, the green space would be an area that have that can have soil and and grass that is wider than one meter. So if you have a, a patch of green space, a green a grass, let's say that is one one meters by one meters, that is considered a green space, right? Uh, and then that come to the second part. Fifty percent of your overall green space needs to be a sustainable green space, right? Sustainable green space meaning green space that let water grow through the ground, and can plant trees, and that can only be on ground floor. So that's why you can see some green space on the ground floor and some on the rooftop. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what you understand is correct, but but you need to understand that there are two types. There's an overall green space that you need to have, and there's also a, a sustainable green space that you need to have. So you cannot you cannot have green space all on your building. You need you cannot you can have all green space on the ground because it qualifies as part of the you know what a sustainable green space. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Kat. Okay, Gunsana, what about the, the typology? Is uh, when you talk with the developers, no, the typology of the of the houses, no, in this case, accommodation. Yeah. The developer has certain preferences to be a small sizes of the rooms, or they want bigger rooms, or. Hmm. Um. What, right, oh, right. What, they, what do they prefer? The small one because they can sell easier, or what? Uh, the size of the room actually doesn't matter in terms of uh, to sell because you calculate the uh, the price based on the square meters, right? Let's say the area of the of the land is what, 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 and then they have to come up with, the marketing have to come up with, okay, we charge about 300,000 baht per square meter or so. And so a 35 square meter or 25 square meter will come up with a price. And so having you know larger room or smaller room, Actually, most of the time depends on the the target group they want to go for. Uh, maybe this this you know uh, condominium on the out outer skirt of Bangkok would prefer to have a family, so they have a larger room. But in in Hong Law would be a studio, let's say. Yeah. So it's the, most of the time depend on depend on the the client. They they give they give you that uh what are the I would say what do you say percentage like. They maybe they want forty percent studio rooms, twenty five percent one bedroom, and another twenty five percent two bedroom. Yeah. So most of the time you you don't have to worry because they'll give you the information. I see, I see. And then this come up with the <clears throat> with the next thing, no? Uh, what is the the challenge here for the architect to design, no? Because if the 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 studio room is like that, the developer give you already that apology. Mm. You as an architect had chance to design the, the own typology, since also need to be linked to the car park. Mm. 
function of the structure. So what is the challenge here that you can design in the room? Something different, no? Yeah, yeah. See, so, can you talk a bit about about this? You know, when I when when we I start I was first graduated, we we are filled with passion and things you want to to do, right? I, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, and you know, my my director will say no. This cannot be done because of this, this, this. You know, but I was like, I didn't know. I just want to explore. I'll just try, right? And so, uh, uh, I would say, it's not, it's not, it's not not possible to to do different things. Uh, but you need, to, you need first of all, you need to understand what is the standard and what is a typical space, uh, or the the room, right? Like I said, the constraint of the parking space. Once you understand that, then you can look for things that you want to try. Like say, you can see that a typical I would say bathroom is always next to the corridor and the bedroom is always facing towards the wheels. Let's say because, you know, that's the way Thai people like it. Uh, but you can, you know, you, you can, you can, you know, propose to say, I, I don't want my, my bathroom towards here because you need a mech mechanical ventilation, right? You want a natural ventilation. You want, I want a bathroom next to the, the face outwards. And so, yeah, you, you can try doing that. And so then what you what you want to put it in place, you want a living room here with no light. Uh, or you can try, instead of doing a square type of place, you want a more long, longer, I would say, I would say, you know, the frontage of your, your units. And maybe that gives you more, more, more frontage in terms of programs you can, let's say for example, right, let me draw. Let's say you have, you, you can try, instead of doing this, you can try a shorter one. Same area, right? And then you have bedrooms here, you know, bathroom here, you have living room and kitchen. Then all you you have a you have a the toilet here and you have a living room here or something like you have more frontage, right? But what you are sacrificing is the way your site is. Let's say your your site uh so have to be longer because you need longer room and then shorter and then a shorter building right or something like that so you need to you need to see yeah. depend on so yeah maybe you want to try this but your site doesn't give give you the flexibility to do so yeah it depends i would say but don't don't stop you know don't stop trying to design good 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 answer thank you thank you and how do you see this this lecture Anania, is going to be to help you or not? Yes, yes. It it would be something that I will want to look back when I'm actually working on the project. As in like when I'm stuck or something, I might like go back to the lecture and see how he worked or think and then maybe apply it when because like every time when we're doing design, we always at some point that we feel like we're stuck and we don't know what to do next. So lecture like this would like you know, give motivation or ideas or inspirations to to do something about our stuff. Yeah, <laughs> it's very good. So it means that you are asking to Mr. Gunchana to share this slide with you or with all the class or <laughs> oh, with sure, the sure. class would be nice if you don't mind. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, yeah, but but uh, in terms of design, I, I think the the I would say the cycle of design will, will be something like the diagram that I provide. You know, you always go through uh, this cycle, yeah. and so yeah, yeah, uh, right. You may maybe it's, it's you know not. No, it's just that like sometimes like during the design process, like I know what to do, but then when I'm actually have to do it, I'm just like, where should I start? But like maybe listening to this lecture give me like, oh maybe I can like you know put things in order or look hmm. back to what I should start with first or something like that you know because mm. like sometimes we just feel overwhelmed and we just like ah what am i supposed to start with but then looking at this lecture there's like you know you give us like what your thought or how you work with your project so it's it's really good thank you for like uh oh. be our guest lecture today yeah you're, you're welcome uh yeah good, good point actually you know you know i i have my team members and i work with juniors that come to the office and and sometimes I give them to design things, you know, and sometimes they're stuck with how to begin. Yeah, yeah, exactly like what you said. And so understanding the, the design process and the system that you need to, uh, you know, when you're stuck, you, 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 you take a step back and you say, hey, what's my first thing to do? And the second is that. And then, you know, and you add more more thinking and more research. And yeah, 
So you need a way to first and foremost for me always you need to understand the process. Very good. I mean, actually, this this slide is at least is a methodology. No, I mean, it's like if you don't have any idea, you just follow this wheel that that you draw here, and then many ideas is going to come. And at the end, if you follow this step, you will have a high rise for sure. No, because you are covering all the aspects. No, for the, mm. for the time. Mm. Yeah, it's really really useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it later you can share this slide. I will. Pass to the students, okay? And okay. They can follow, no? And maybe sure. you can be a external jury, no? To evaluate. Ah, right. <laughs> right. Uh, so it's in your methodology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I think you know, uh, a back is actually very strong point is in term of design. You know, I go out and we we get you know feedbacks and say you know a back student are very good at design. And so maybe our our university uh, give more freedom in terms of uh, exploring design. And that that is what uh, really really nice when I look back. Yeah. Just try try explore and and uh, and just do your thing. Uh, because you know in in school you don't have the pressure of like uh, trying to to uh, let's say you have more freedom and you have less constraint I guess. And yeah, just give it all. Okay, let's see uh, another because now students start to talk, no? Jana, can you talk more about those pressures between the the outside and the inside? Hmm. Hmm. Right. Okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, currently, I'm a project architect and at Somdun, right? And so when I go out and present my my design, there's two there's two I would say two two steps, right? First of first first of, first of all. Uh, there's a pressure in term of you need to de deliver within 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 your office first, right? You need to have a design that your director approve, right? And so and then afterwards, when you go out to present, you need to have the the pressure of you know giving it to your client and, and trying to sell it to your client, right? Um, the first pressure would be you know um, you have a everything you need to do. You have a you need a time you have a timeline because the project have a schedule, right? And so maybe you have a, it will give you a, a week to come up with a facade design, like 10 facade design, for example, <laughs> right? 10 of it. And so you cannot, you, you cannot just start in one design. You need to have multiple different tries and, and, and see what works and what not. Doing quickly and making, doing something quickly and in time is what gives me uh, myself the pressure. And so how I deal with, with that is, to be prepared in terms of you need, I need to know uh, to design a facade. You need to know what are the fundamental of facade, what type of material the facade have, uh, and so what are the uh, you know case studies and you know everything. And so if you prepare with the knowledge and the fundamentals, you can use that to form an analysis and come up with an idea. Because if you are limited in what you know, then you can uh, only design so much. So yeah, that's one way to how I manage the pressure. As well as going to the the when I go for meetings, the client may ask something, the question that you cannot pre be prepared. They can ask you anything and say, hey, if I try this, would it work? And you cannot just be like, oh, I don't know. I have to go back and try and 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 you know look. Maybe you can, but sometimes you are on the spot. And so always come prepared, and always try to get information as much as information as you have about that topic. So you'll be, you know, that's stressful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see another question, no, from the students. Um, okay. I kind of have question. Uh, so, have you ever met any client who really like um, strict with the feng shui? Oh yeah, yeah. And how do you deal with? <laughs> yeah, the, the project I'm working on now is an office building uh, for electric company. Um, and in every meeting, there is a feng shui master always there. And the clients always listen to feng shui master. Do you believe it? When I present a yeah, facade design, yeah. right? <laughs> they, they, they didn't even comment. They asked the feng shui master, what does she think? And whatever she says, yeah, we, we have to, we take that. To the architect and then we develop from that the client didn't say anything or didn't express their opinion so much right um 
yeah, so, but, you know, uh, I I wasn't really a, a believer of, you know, feng shui because we, we as architect, we, we have scientific approach and uh, more like, um, uh, yeah, a systematic approach. But feng shui master can be more, can, if, if you look at it in a way we, you know, in, in this project, I try to work with the feng shui master. I try to understand the, the kind of things that will will um, make make she like the, the project. She'll give you, I like, say, hey, the building cannot have the rough edges. They need to be smooth. You, you, you need to have gold color. You need to have, you know, stones, material. And so, yeah, okay, you take that. It's like one, it's a part of your brief, part of your design parameters. You take that, you take that, and then you go back and you design with that your criteria added on to your design. And so you, you're not, I didn't, uh, don't try to go against it and so, and try to, you know, go with it. Yeah. And so after the project, we, we are at the tendering period now. So design is complete. And so what I've learned is that, yeah, we can work it out and, and things that we can go along with. Yeah. It's not that bad. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Like mm -hmm. when you design, because you talked about researching and I want to know like how many layers of research did you have to do to finally get like one piece of work to be like completed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, research, right? Mm. Typically, typically research, uh, I, I would say I do some, not, not all, not a lot. I mean, not a lot in terms of like, you need to prepare five case study or six case studies, but uh, okay. Once, once, like, like I said, the the process, right? Once you understand the the law and regulation, you understand the site, you understand the brief, then you try to come up with uh, more or less the the big picture of how your building is gonna be, and then you try to look for for things that uh, what other people is, is doing. So let's say I'm doing an office building, and then I and my building is you know high rise is in this constraint and so then then with that keywords or that that i uh, say uh parameters you go and try to do research and so it's, it's like a back and forth because like if i do research and i come and I, go, I come back to design facade and it doesn't work then i go back to research again and then i come back to another to try another des design and so it's like it's like uh research is always in the process of designing because you 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 don't you cannot expect to research once and then that research become your design and oh everything is all right you know because there'll always be a better design you know uh, and so yeah it's like a back and forth I, I can't say how much but it's always a constant thing okay thank you more questions yeah I have the one million baht question for you. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm waiting for for especially three students that they should be the one asking you this this question, no? Who are Kathy Lee, Winansaya, and Pramo. Mm -hmm. You guys has here the the one million baht question. Can you make the one million baht question to Unsana? Kathy, Winansaya, Pramo. Um yeah, it seems like as students we're we kind of like have problems with like um, concepts, like how we um, put our concepts into our work and like, yeah, like the importance of it and stuff like that. So the question basically, the question to you, Bunsana, is mm -hmm. uh, they want to compile the meaning of design concept in architecture. So they would like to ask you, how do you understand design concept in architecture apply in this case for the high rise building no i can see mm -hmm. that you are talking about many design concepts but it's always talking design concept about fashion design concept about landscape in the high rise building design concept in this specific detail of the high rise building no but what about the overall what is the design concept that we should have for a high rise building and then later on we develop details no like for the facade i'm going to focus in this area no but how do you understand this design concept in the overall concept of the building? That's the question, Winansaya. Is that one? Yes. 
Thank you. <laughs> yes. Know your question better, right? Wait, wait. Uh, is the book about? Um, it's a one million, one million baht. It's a very difficult question. It's a very difficult question. Design concept. Can you explain to them with your experience? Uh, I'll try. I'll try my best. Uh, it's a very difficult question because, you know, uh, what differentiate one architect from another is is design. Yeah. And so, and so, uh, if you want to to know or want to summarize design concept uh, or how you come up with design concept, uh, I would say there is no there is no short form. It's a it's a process, and that process will be involving analysis. I would say. A concept you can say, oh, I, I, I can try a building that is, you know, uh, look like an elephant, for example, you know, yeah, let's, let's say the concept of this building is an elephant, right? You, or you can anything, but, um, but to come up with that, that, that word, that concept word, uh, you cannot, uh, for me, cannot just throw, like, I, I want a dinosaur kind of building, you know, like a building, high rise building look like a T-Rex, something like that. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, the concept come with the way you analyze building. You can see um, many big architects, like you know, big big architect OMA, you know, and and other firms that they always try to analyze and in relation to their their, their context. And they they didn't they didn't they didn't I say think about the concept, but the concept come to them once they analyze. Uh, yeah, I'll, so I would say to come up with uh, the process of design concept would be you need to have analysis of everything of design and then you and everything will come and become your concept. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? You, so what I'm trying to give an example is that uh, a concept cannot just be anything or or what you can just imagine and just throw it at because you need to work that concept into your architecture, right? And so to work that concept into your architecture, you need reason behind everything that you do. And to come to have a reason, you need to have analysis. Yeah. And so so instead of instead of thinking of concept back into the architecture, think of analysis and then and then into concept will be my way of 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 uh, approaching this, yeah, it's it's uh it's not a it's not a clear cut way of uh, explaining, but 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 everyone is different, and 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 in every project, uh, that is how I come up with concept. Yeah, I I kind of like your idea because like I'm more in that side because most of my work are based on like the analysis. I cannot think like what I'm going to do first with concept, but like, yeah, I need to do analysis first. So then I would know what my concept is going to be. So is that like, sometimes I feel like my key creativity is not that much. Maybe like <laughs> I want to do something like very, yeah, really key creative, but no, it's most of them based on all the analysis. That's all my work here. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Uh... You're right. Everything is all analysis. Yeah, because when you do things and you explain to someone else, right? They will ask why, why, why you do this, why you do that, why is the building look like this, why is this color? You know, everything is why because you are trying to explain what you you are processing in your head to, and that make them want to buy into your idea, right? And so having a re reason or you know some something to convince them is always a, a you know a victory for me. Uh, if you just give them oh because I like this concept because of this my feeling you know it doesn't very it's not very convincing so what you are trying to do is is I would say on the right track uh, for creativity I think the maybe you can try more having more analysis like because giving having more analysis maybe it can give you different different things that you can con put into your consideration and so having more things that you can consider can give you more things to design. And yeah, we can help with that a bit, yeah? Yeah, thank you. 
I have one question like uh, does the concept really matter in real uh, life like when we are presenting to the uh, presenting to the client or the profit is the one thing that uh, really matter so uh, what, what's the I matter? mean like I mean the concept that's really matter when you are working in the real field for a builder <laughs> or the profit uh, or the profit is the thing that the really matter the programs I mean the profit the profit, profit for the oh the yeah. profit okay yeah 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 um unfortunately in bangkok right now profit is number one i would say uh you know anyone want to you know to invest in making a building they're always looking at their returns and um that's the way it is currently uh and so is the concept matters it it does but it does at the end right once you satisfy their their returns or or you can make a condominium that that is profitable for them, right? Or an office building, a hotel that that you know, I I I have making hotel. I can, I have tried making an. Uh, I mean, I mean, I have go through of projects that is office, condominium, and hotels. And I can tell you, they'll give you right away. I need a three hundred keys hotel. I need a five hundred units bedroom in my condominium. Or I have, or I need at least five thousand square meter of working space. And so, at the beginning, you you didn't think about concept at all. You don't you didn't think. You, you don't have to think about how your building going to look like because you need to satisfy this criteria first. Can you make the building having enough, fi having 5,000 square meter at least? Or can you have a hotel that is at least five, 300 keys? If you can make it uh, feasible to, to the client, then you can, okay, once they say, okay, it's profitable, we go on with the project. Then you you add your, you know, architecture, uh, your uh, being an architect, you add that into into the building because that is what uh, that is what um, helps in trying to 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 make the building sell more. Actually, the building that look nice, that function nice, that manage nice, is is benefit to everyone. Uh, the people who buy the the bedroom in that condo, condominium will be thankful for the the way you design a very efficient way of uh, you know making building plans, having a good facilities. Having a lot of green space, they'll thank they'll thank you for that. As an architect, right? You need to think of it in two ways. You need to because we are doing this as a business, right? We are we are consultants to the de developers, and we're trying to make them happy and make money. But also on the other hand, we are architect want to make a good architecture. Yeah. So I'll say concept come come later on once you once the budi, the project can 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 be profitable. Which makes sense because if there is no profit, I mean you don't go to build. Yeah. Especially yeah. high-rise building. No? Yeah, you you are you are using their money to to build architect to build your design, right? And so yeah, I mean if you you do it with your own money, then of course you can you can try and not make it profitable, but you, whatever you like. Correct, correct. Okay, good. Um, is this clear the answer, Kati, Unansaya, Pramod? You can track this thing, you can write the answer. And with this information, then you can ask to other people, no? With this information done Bunsana, and then you start already the interviews, no? Yeah, good, good things. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. I mean, if you have other questions, you can always uh, send through uh, Ajan Miguel. Um, I'll try, if, you have, if I, I'll try to answer them. Yeah, yeah. You can leave also your contact email, no? and you can also build your network with mm. your emails. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Okay. It's okay. Uh, more question. I would like to. I would like to hear. No. Any any other question? There is here, for example, Kavin. You are also one one guest. Okay, but you are doing your thesis in a high rise building, no? Would you like to take the opportunity to ask to Mr. Gunchana some question, Mr. Kavin? Yeah, well, initially you had many questions, but I think I think he answered a few of them just now already. Okay. But maybe maybe it could be more. Maybe I'm asking for advice, less of a question, more more of an advice, right? As uh, John Miguel said, right now I'm doing thesis and an office office tower. Now I'm running into issue where like like we mentioned that you know high rise there's a lot of constraint correct you have to you know design 
considering the car park, you have to consider the efficiency, right? For me, maybe 60%, 40%, something like that, the efficiency in terms of saleable areas. Mm. Now, with that being said, while trying to accomplish all that, it, it kind of takes off away from this kind of, you know, the value added that you mentioned, right? I end up with kind of like a stack building where maybe all the programs doesn't really respond to the client need or there's less like green areas and things like that. And then that's, um, I want to kind of like kind of push the boundary and go up like above a typical building and then I'm still stuck in that box that, you know, when you follow the car park and things like that, you're stuck in a grid, correct? And and I think, I think many of the students in this class also will soon meet that issue where right? you're stuck in the grid. So, so what would your advice be in terms of in terms of that? Hmm. Right. Right. Uh, well, I, this answer can be split into two two things. Uh, you say in terms of when you're in school or when you are, uh, you know, at work. I would say at work having a, a rectangle, you know, tower, maybe is maybe okay. You know, uh, maybe the client doesn't want any. <clears throat> Anything, or maybe they prioritize saleable area, and that's all they want, and that's okay, you know, when they're working. <clears throat> but as an architect, we always want to add things that improve things, right? And like, like, like what you asked me, and so, and so, uh, ad ad advice on how to break out of a box, uh, would be to, I'll say, first of all, you can look at case studies. I'm sure there are many, many of these towers that is that try to break out a box like, you know, the like Mahana corn, right? Maybe they start off as a box uh, to maximize profit, uh, maximize the area, and then they shift off part of the building and add it on top of something. And then they can, you know, transform the, the form of the building in that way. But you can look at uh, many case studies first to see, to, ex to open more, uh, more of what, uh, you know, they have designed around the world first. And then secondly, I was try to research into different type of element of the building, right? Like the building consists of like like a Lego, right? You have a you know parking, you have office building, you have core design. So like I said, you can you can try to different type of core design. You can try different type of parking design. And so different design of different things can can make the building, you know, look uh, become special in a way. So instead of just uh, strict uh, I would say you know, constrain yourself to just one type. Maybe maybe this type of parking space is the most efficient, right? But the other one works as well, but it's not as efficient, but, you know, it gives you more rooms to design. Yeah, and then this core may be the most efficient, but the other one works as well, and you can, you can you also can have 55% efficiency. You sacrifice something a little bit to, to give it to something else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So can can you tell me about maybe your experience in real life in, in terms of you know trying to compromise this efficiency and all the things we talk about when you talk to clients? Mm, right. Uh, what I uh, well just just this uh, my project that I did the office right the client wants to have as much space as possible because they want to you know future proof their building right. It's a it's a self owned building, and they want to you know in the future they want to add more staff. They can have more buildings, uh, more space for their for their workers. But we we add in a a, a town hall, like a auditorium in the middle of the building, right? So so but that is like double volume amphitheater, right? Imagine that in the building. And so, uh, of course, having that in the middle of the building take away the 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 floor plate, right? The the area where they can put you know. You know, rows of desks, right? And so, what we fight—I mean, I'll say, I'll say, fight uh, or trying to fight for our design is that we we give them something that that we, we try to explain to them the value of having a centralized uh, common area, a co-working space where they can host meetings, they can organize a group uh, presentation, or they can do something that add values to their space instead of just a, a horizontal flat space, you know. That, and they were like, okay, mm, yeah, I, maybe we have less space for for workers in the future, but this can boost the efficiency or boost morale 
for the workers and improve the office environment, you know? So it's not easy, it's not easy task, but I would say if you give a convincing reason behind it and, you know, uh, with, with good enough uh, evidence to support your, your ideas, I, I, I'm sure they will listen. Yeah, like, like uh, my case, for example. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think uh, if there is no other questions, Mr. Bunchana, thank you so much for this wonderful lecture, no? Look like uh, very, very clear, no? Uh, all the information. Mm. Really you're, you're, you're welcome. I, um, I really love it, huh? Uh, it, uh, we, it's, yeah. Go, go, go ahead. No, it's a, it's an honor to to be able to present and and give back. I, I wish back in the day when I was student, I have more of this. Yeah, and having uh, more, you know, like my seniors coming back and giving tips and guides will be will be nice. You know, I I don't think my answers may may uh is applicable to all things, uh, but it's just my my own take and my own experience. And so some of you is different, and I'm sure you have ways to in this and this this question you have different ways to answer it, and so it doesn't have, doesn't have to be my way. But but yeah, but what I'm trying to say maybe one of the way that I have trial and errors and and I come up with and that it fit me. Yeah, and so so yeah, it's a process I think.